Hi, welcome to 5 Minute Find Clues from the Graveyard. This is Juliana Smith and today I'm going to share some tips for getting the most out of your next trip to the cemetery. Sometimes when we get to the cemetery we may find that our ancestor's tombstone doesn't have quite the amount of detail that we'd like to see. But check with the cemetery by writing or visiting and see what information they can provide. This is a letter that we received that included the information on 16 interments in that grave marked just simply James Kelly. So a lot more detail that you can get from them. On the other side of the coin, you're also going to want to look at the gravestone whenever possible. Look online through findagrave.com or visit in person if possible. This letter from the cemetery gave us the names of everyone that was buried in this plot. Their ages of death, dates of interment, but there was an important piece of information missing. One day we were working in our tree and we got a shaky leaf on Ancestry.com that led us to a memorial page on findagrave.com. One of our cousins had posted a photo of Thomas Howley's gravestone. And on that gravestone was an important clue. It said Thomas Howley, first class fireman, USS Fort Jackson. That little clue led us to a 123 page Civil War pension file full of wonderful details about the family. So you never know where that clue is going to turn up. Your first step in your search is going to be to determine where they're buried. This is Thomas Howley's death certificate, and you can see here that his place of burial is in Her Holy Cross Cemetery. Probate files may include clues as well. This probate file includes a bill from the funeral director that included receipts for a Graceland vault deposit and a hearse to Graceland. Also check obituaries. Sometimes you'll find the burial place of the deceased listed in the obituary itself. When you're going to the cemetery, you're going to want to dress comfortably if you're like me. I, this is a picture of me and my cousin trying to get that perfect shot of Thomas Howley's headstone. Sometimes it can be difficult, even if the headstone's in good condition, to get a really good photograph. Try using light and angles to get a picture. The first shot here is a picture facing directly at the stone, and the details are somewhat readable but a little bit difficult. From an angle we get a little bit more detail, but sometimes photo editing software can help us with this. I put this into some photo software and I inverted the image colors and was able to enhance it a little bit to make it much more readable. Here are a few other tips for your cemetery visit. Be sure to be safe first and foremost. Cemeteries can sometimes be in secluded places, so going in a group is always a good idea. Also, be aware of uneven surfaces. Sometimes you'll run into spots where the ground has sunken in somewhat. Also, you have sometimes you run into the little gopher holes and little trails. They can easily cause a tripping hazard. If you're bringing children along, be especially watchful and mindful of the fact that a lot of those monuments are unstable. So, you want to keep a close eye. Keep, uh, check for cemetery guidelines as well and restrictions. For example, some cemeteries will allow you to take a tombstone rubbing where you put a piece of paper over the face of the stone and using a piece of chalk or crayon gently rub until you get the etching of the tombstone to come through. Other cemeteries frown on this because there is the fragile nature of some types of stones. The stone could actually collapse. Sometimes using a flash when you're taking a picture can even help. Or try wetting the stone with some water that can sometimes make it more readable. A mirror held at an angle can reflect sunlight onto the stone so as to cause shadows on the inscription. And the same can be true with a sunshield, a car sunshield that you would put in your windshield. Um, and those are, have an added little bonus. You can use those on those days where you have the dappled sunlight coming through the trees. You can hold this, the sunshield as a sunshield to shade the stone and get a better picture of it. And for that reason, shady day visits are also a good idea. Also, try visiting at different times of the day. Sometimes, depending on where the sun is hitting the stone, you may get a better picture than on other times of the day. But go and enjoy the time there, because I don't know about you, but I really find a real close connection to my ancestors when I go to the cemetery. There's kind of a nice piece that goes with it. Hopefully, you're also going to find some really great clues there. So good luck and happy searching.